Okay, so this is going to be a demonstration of the rather insane capabilities of this uh, 350 VA Fiskars uh, power server online UPS that I'm running as a solar inverter for this uh, giant 48 volt battery bank. And uh, just as a matter of course, here's the label on the unit, and uh, you can clearly see that it says. Or can you? Uh, but it says 500 VA, 350 watts. In UPS terms, that usually means that it's capable of uh, measuring uh, 350 watts uh, real power, but uh, it will ignore the apparent power. So if you've got a 500 VA, 350 watt load, that will run fine, but if you actually use a uh, 500 VA 500 watt load uh, it will be more than 350 watts and it will shut off but uh, that's not how this device seems to do so it's connected uh, through this uh, black cable here running to this uh, installation cable here which goes through the wall and to the outlets there it's also running these two lights and this is the power point right here and uh, here's the test setup uh, this is a 650 and 850 or 1500 watts combined electric heater and uh, this oscilloscope is connected uh, straight to the mains it's uh, measuring between earth and live on the inverter and as you can see we've got a perfect uh, 231 volts at the output outlet. So let's just turn this uh, 650 watt heater on on our 350 watt inverter and see what it does to a waveform. Absolutely nothing. As you can see, it's on 650 watts, and we've got 650 watts <laughs> getting to it. And we don't even have any voltage drop. Uh, the inverter is just fused with a 18 amp fuse or breaker in the on the battery side, so it's going to break, flip if I overload it too much. We've only got about 900 watts going into the inverter, and it's about 80 percent efficient. Anyway, let's tip it up. Let's uh, do 850 watts. does not even care. And I remind you, this is a 350 watt inverter. It's probably throwing an overload alarm, but it's, I haven't been able to make it shut off. There we go. It has overload, but it just does not care. It'll keep running until the <laughs> Breaker flips. Now the real impressive test, or rather, and uh, as a matter of course, let's just do both of these switches. Uh, One thousand five hundred watts. That will actually turn it into proper clipping. But we still have one hundred and seventy-six volts at. Yeah, 850 watts. So that's where we will start to run into some kind of upper limit. It's probably got to do with the output uh, impedance of the transformer. A purely resistive load like an electric heat isn't very difficult. However, I do have my vacuum cleaner, which is a brushed motor, which is regulated by a triac. So this is a horrible reactive load. This is pretty much the worst thing you could subject an inverter to. Well, let's see what happens. Let's just start off at the minimum setting where it's going to have the worst power factor, uh, but also the lowest power, of course. A bit of distortion, but not too bad. And we are 
drawing uh, 350 watts, 300 watts, but uh, we are drawing 740 VAs. Let's turn off to half power. Bit more distortion. 800 VA. Six hundred watts. Ah, oh, five fifty. Doesn't care. Full power. Ah, dim the light slightly. Seven hundred seventy watts. And we're now clipping. But we're drawing seven hundred and seventy watts. Eight hundred and something VA. Eight of eight. Three hundred and fifty. Ah. Ah, uh, I bet we flipped for breaker there. Yeah, we we'll flipped for breaker. Because this uh, access point here is on the same breaker and also the lights in this room. <laughs> there we go. This little guy just does not give a single fuck. 900 watts, no problem. Just clip a bit. 500 watts, no problem. But it seems, as long as I don't get too close to that 18 amp for break is rated for, I can pretty much do the most rated power out of this thing. Okay. It is smelling a bit like warm electronics about it, I must say. Listen to that transformer hum. Anyway, I just wanted to share that rather impressive bit of tiny heavy kit. Thank you for watching. Cheerio.